This is an ultrasound study of bilateral carotid arteries. The first image demonstrates the right proximal subclavian artery. And this is a normal triphasic waveform and perhaps even a, a quadriphasic waveform. We have one, two, three, and perhaps a fourth here. Seen better on this waveform. One, two, three, four. This is totally normal. Uh, proximal carotid signal and uh, the uh, flow in the, uh, the color portion of this image is blue because the image was updated at a time when flow was in a reverse phase. This is the proximal common carotid artery. This waveform looks slightly abnormal. It's rounded, indicating possibly some disease upstream, perhaps in the aortic artery or right at the proximal common carotid artery takeoff. Uh, diastolic flow is very low, and whenever we see parvus tardis, we think about disease upstream. When we see low pulsatility or high pulsatility in a vessel that should have low pulsatility, we think about uh, disease downstream. So we may see some disease in further images based on this waveform. And here's some disease. In the right distal common carotid artery, we have a rind of hypoechoic plaque surrounding the, uh, the flow lumen. This is grayscale image of transverse and longitudinal uh, uh, projections of the distal common carotid artery on the right. We can see some calcific plaque. The hypoechoic, more homogeneous plaque is, uh, is not uh, well visualized on this image. The color image, however, shows it very clearly. It's hypoechoic plaque uh, surrounding the distal common carotid artery. Here we have the waveform. We can see a uh, Nice spectral window, good dichrotic notch, reasonable amount of diastolic flow, and uh, uh, the only uh, indication there may be disease is there's a slight rounding of the top of this waveform. Another image of, of the waveform, in this case uh, we're seeing now flow velocity of uh, 126 centimeters per second. Uh, remember that the criteria we use for diagnosing disease in the internal carotid artery do not apply to the common carotid artery. Uh, this is a normal velocity for this artery. Grayscale showing again a, some calcific plaque in the distal common carotid artery and a little bit in the origin of the uh, external carotid artery. Colored Doppler demonstrates uh, a widely patent external carotid artery with a, a branch coming off in a, an anterior uh, direction and this branch is flowing in the opposite direction as the ECA indicating that it is most likely the superior thyroidal artery. The Doppler waveform again shows some rounding and uh, indicating some disease upstream or closer to the heart, proximal disease we see the dichrotic notch in a, uh, a relatively low diastolic flow velocity, although it has not been measured on this image. This is a transverse image of the bifurcation. And uh, on the right side, we can see the uh, external carotid artery with a widely patent flow lumen. The uh, ICA has a much smaller area of, uh, of flow with a large amount of hypoechoic homogeneous plaque surrounding it. Grayscale image of the bifurcation here we see the superior thyroidal artery, external carotid artery, internal carotid artery, distal common carotid artery with some calcific plaque. Uh, the uh, plaque, hypoechoic plaque, 
producing this small area of flow lumen is not well appreciated on the grayscale image, but can be seen very nicely on the color Doppler image. Here we see a large area of hypocoic homogeneous plaque, a smaller area up here in the anterior uh, portion of the vessel. This mixture of colors here, sometimes known as color confetti sign, and this is a sign of turbulence. Power Doppler again demonstrates a narrowed flow lumen in the proximal internal carotid artery. This is a Doppler signal, and I'm assuming they walked the Doppler gate uh, from the level of stenosis here to this area where there's a flow reversal, and we see bidirectional flow. Uh, the gate was probably straddling the flow reversal to get this type of image. Here in an area of stenosis in that narrowed uh, flow lumen of the internal carotid artery, the maximal velocity uh, peak systole is 445 centimeters per second. The diastolic flow is 186 centimeters per second. This indicates a level of disease greater than 70% stenosis. Another color Doppler imaging showing the area of disease, power Doppler showing the area of disease, an arrow marking a, a marked uh, narrowing of the flow lumen. Here the signal uh, at that area, and again we've got a uh, an increased systolic velocity of 383 centimeters per second and end diastolic velocity of 156 centimeters per second. The mid ICA shows a decrease in velocity as we move away from the area of stenosis. We still have uh, increased flow relative to normal, however, at 142 centimeters per second. The uh, waveform is rounded. If we look at uh, the flow along the line, we see this is where the brightness of the pixelation is. And uh, this is where most of the flow is in these lower velocity areas. Very little flow is making it up to this 142 centimeter per second level. Here we are at the distal ICA, and uh, we're starting to perhaps get a reappearance of a spectral window. The waveform is rounded indicating disease uh, upstream, which, of course, we've just visualized. Uh, and uh, the flow uh, peak systole is diminished. It's down to uh, 37 centimeters per second. The vertebral waveform is anagroup. We know this because the color is red. And as we move this way, we're moving away from the transducer. Red shows the direction of flow away from the transducer. Another way of evaluating flow direction is looking at the pulse Doppler signal. We see this little minus next to the 160. This minus tells us that flow is away from the transducer and that that's the direction it should be for the vertebral artery in this orientation. The flow velocity is, is somewhat high for a vertebral artery at 138 centimeters per second. And, uh, this may indicate that the right vertebral artery is serving as a collateral pathway. The proximal subclavian artery on the left is highly disorganized. This is uh, a rather difficult to interpret uh, image because we can't discern flow direction. But uh, clearly, it's not a triphasic waveform. It doesn't have a sharp upstroke and appears to be disorganized. Color image of the proximal subclavian artery, another image showing the takeoff of the left vertebral artery. And here we have uh, a signal at a highly stenotic region. The flow velocity is 475 meters per second, but what really tells us this is abnormal is a lack of multiphasicity. This is a monophasic flow. We should never see monophasic flow to resting muscle. And of course, the patient is not using their arm during the carotid exam. This should be at least biphasic, hopefully triphasic. Remember, on the right side, we saw four phases. Uh, so that this is clearly abnormal. 
Here's another velocity of the subclavian. This is distal to the stenosis. We get the sawtooth appearance, bidirectional flow, just indicating turbulence or flow reversal. We can tell that by the blue and red that are shown in the color portion of this image. The proximal common carotid artery has a uh, rounded signal again indicating uh, some disease uh, upstream. Seeing this in both the right and the left common carotid arteries uh, supports the idea that there is uh, aortic stenosis. Here's the proximal common carotid again. Look at this harvest tires. Look how much this is rounded. This is a relatively low velocity for a proximal common carotid as well. So this may be a post stenotic waveform. The left distal common carotid artery and transverse showing some calcific and some uh, uh, hypoechoic plaques surrounding the flow lumen. Here we have a grayscale image uh, which shows the calcific plaque well but does not demonstrate the hypoechoic plaque. On color Doppler we can see the hypochoic plaque by the, the flow void, absence of flow in this area. And uh, of course the gain is, is a little higher now and we can we can actually see some some echoes within this plaque. The Doppler signal in the distal common carotid artery is relatively normal but again a rounded waveform. It's subtle but it's definitely when we look at the breakpoint here uh, definitely real and uh, we have a nice spectral window normal flow velocity uh, at peak systole and diastole has not been measured on this. Grayscale of the ECA color Doppler shows a branch coming off verifying that it is the external carotid artery. This branch is flowing in the same direction as the ECA and is not likely to be the uh, superior thyroidal artery. This is a, a branch that's further downstream. The ECA is an abnormal appearance, almost looks like an internal carotid artery uh, with a significant amount of diastolic flow. This always raises the suspicions that perhaps the ECA is serving as a collateral pathway for uh, flow uh, to the brain. Uh, another alternative is that this uh, Doppler waveform was obtained in the ECA at a point that is proximal to the takeoff of the superior thyroidal artery. The superior thyroidal artery is a low resistance waveform and can sometimes uh, you know, give this kind of a signal. This is a transverse image of the uh, proximal ICA. A very tiny flow lumen is seen with a lot of hypoechoic and homogeneous plaques surrounding it. Grayscale imaging shows some of the calcific plaque well, but does a poor job of imaging the uh, hypoechoic plaque. Color Doppler shows it very nicely. We see that area of narrowing. Power Doppler does the same thing. This area of narrowing uh, within the proximal ICA. The waveform in the proximal ICA is highly abnormal. It's a dampened pulsatility. Harvest tardis is demonstrated and a very uh, poor spectral window indicating turbulence. If we look at an area of even further stenosis, we get a, uh, a velocity of uh, 296 centimeters per second and diastolic velocity of 163 centimeters per second. This corresponds to a disease level that is greater than 70% stenosis. Another uh, area of uh, high level of stenosis, even a higher velocity of 309 centimeters per second. We get beyond the stenotic portion of the ICA into the middle ICA and we see dampened flow. We see a rounded waveform, little zigzag or sawtooth waveform 
usually seen postcanonically. And finally, in the distal ICA, we uh, are starting to get the appearance of a spectral window again, and the presence of disease uh, is not, there is rather no disease detected in this portion of the artery. The vertebral artery has a, an unusual, we call this a bisphorence uh, or bisphorience uh, pattern, sometimes called the bunny ear pattern. And uh, this is due to high level stenosis in the left subclavian artery, which we saw earlier in the study. The flow is in the correct direction. It's flowing away from the transducer and uh, it's red which is flow away from the transducer. Again, we look at the minus signs in the pulse Doppler waveform, and we can see that. So uh, it is anechoic flow, but it is what sometimes is referred to as a pre-steel pattern. These two, this, this deep notch here, this deep difference between the, the two peaks or bunny ears is uh, significant of uh, a high level of stenosis somewhere proximal to where this signal was taken. And again, in this case, it would be the high level of disease seen in the proximal left subclavian artery. So this patient has bilateral greater than 70% stenosis in both internal carotid arteries. They have a high grade stenosis in the left subclavian artery with an aberrant signal in the left vertebral artery. And there is also some evidence of perhaps aortic stenosis due to the parvus tardis demonstrated uh, within the signals in both common carotid arteries.